In this video, we're going to look at a slightly more advanced integration technique called integration by substitution. And in the top left hand corner, we have the general equation that's used for this type of integration. It states that the integral of y dx equals the integral of y dx du du. And as we go through this example, I'm going to explain what each of these terms mean. So the integral that we're going to resolve using this technique is the integral of 4x, open brackets, x squared plus 4, close brackets, dx. So that 4x, x squared plus 4, would be equal to y. Now as we look at that particular equation there, we can see that it's very difficult to integrate using the methods that we've used previously. And in fact, what we're going to need to do is substitute x squared plus 4 for a new variable that we're going to call u. So let's do that first of all now. Let's say that u equals x squared plus 4. Now if we look at our equation in its general form, we can see that we have a term here, dx du. And the way that we can find that is first of all by finding du dx. And du dx is just the derivative of u. So we need to differentiate u. Although this is an integration technique, the first step is to differentiate our value u. Now differentiating u, we'll just get 2x. Now hopefully what you've noticed is that what we've just found is du dx, but what we need is dx du, or the inverse. So what we can do is take the inverse of du dx, and that will give us dx du. We've seen a technique previously called taking the reciprocal, where the bottom of a fraction becomes the top of a fraction, and the top becomes the bottom. And in effect, that's what we're doing here, because 2x is really just 2x over 1. So when we take the reciprocal of that side, we get 1 over 2x. So now we have something we can work with, because again, if we look at the right-hand side of this equation, we have y dx du integrated with respect to u. But let's rewrite that integral. That's the same as saying the integral of 4x, x squared plus 4, that's our y. dx du is 1 over 2x. Well, 1 over 2x is the same as dividing by 2x. And we're going to need to integrate that with respect to u. What we can see now is that we can cancel out the x on the top and the x on the bottom. And what we'll end up with is a more simplified version. So we'll end up with the integral of 4 over 2 x squared plus 4 du. Now 4 over 2 is just 2, so let's simplify this a little bit further. That will be the integral of 2 on the outside, x squared plus 4 du. Now the problem we have here is we can't integrate x with respect to u. But what we know is that x squared plus 4, we've already said, is our variable u. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to integrate 2u with respect to u. Now 2u integrated with respect to u, we're going to raise the power by 1, which will give us u squared. And then we're going to divide the coefficient by the new power. Well, our coefficient was 2, and 2 divided by 2 is just 1. Therefore, the integral of 2u with respect to u is u squared. Now, because this is an indefinite integral, we haven't set any boundaries to resolve between. What we need to remember is to add our constant. Now, the final thing that we can do to tidy all of this up is we can substitute back in for u. Therefore, our final solution, instead of u squared, we've got x squared plus 4 all squared. And again, we need to remember to add our constant. So we found the solution to the original integral, 4x, open brackets, x squared plus 4, all integrated with respect to x. Let's look at another example to practice this technique. And this time we're going to integrate cos 5x plus 2. And again, we don't have any techniques that we've already learned that we could use to solve this. So instead we're going to use integration by substitution. And the substitution we're going to make, first of all, is we're going to say that u 
equals 5x plus 2. Now, if you remember in the previous example, we needed to find du dx in order to find dx by du. So let's find du by dx. And again, we're going to differentiate this new term u with respect to x. Just as a reminder, we are differentiating this term even though this is an integration technique. The first step is to find the derivative of u. So differentiating that term, well, 5x just differentiates to 5, and 2 being a constant just differentiates to 0. It disappears. So du dx in this case is 5. We need to take the reciprocal of that. Recall that 5 is just the same as 5 over 1. So taking the reciprocal of the left side, we get dx by du. And taking the reciprocal of the right-hand side, we get a fifth. So now we can rewrite our integral in the format of the right-hand side of our general equation. So we'll get the integral of y, well, y is cos 5x plus 2. dx du is 1 over 5, which is the same as dividing all of that by 5 and we're integrating with respect to u. Now we know that 5x plus 2 can be replaced by u. So what we're going to get this time is we're going to get the integral of a fifth cos of u integrated with respect to u. Well, cos integrates to sine. There's no coefficient in front of the u, so there's nothing to carry forward here. So that's just going to integrate to a fifth sine u plus our constant. And the last step then is to replace u with 5x plus 2. So we get a fifth sine open brackets 5x plus 2 plus our constant. Okay, let's look at a few more examples. So this time we're going to integrate cos 2 pi t plus pi over 4 with respect to t. And the reason we need to integrate this with respect to t is because our variable this time is t, it's not x. But the process is exactly the same. The first thing we need to do is make a substitution. u equals 2 pi t plus pi over 4. And the second thing we need to do is differentiate that. But this time we're differentiating with respect to t once again because our variable is t, not x. Now hopefully you recall that 2 pi is just a number. 2 times pi is roughly 6.2. So when we differentiate this, 2 pi t differentiates to just 2 pi, as 2 pi is just a number. And pi over 4, which is again just a number or a constant, is just going to differentiate to 0. It's going to disappear. Our next step is to reciprocate this, because we don't want du by dt, we want dt by du. Although in the general form it's written dx by du, our variable this time is t, not x. Now recall that 2 pi is the same as 2 pi over 1, so what we'll get is dt by du equals 1 over 2 pi. So now we can write our full equation out in the general form. We've got the integral of y, which is cos 2 pi t plus pi over 4. We need to multiply that by dt by du. Well, multiplying by 1 over 2 pi is the same as dividing by 2 pi. And we're integrating that with respect to u. So we can rewrite that. That's the same as cos of u over 2 pi. And we're integrating that with respect to u. Well, cos u just integrates to sine u. And 1 over 2 pi is just a constant. So what we'll end up with is 1 over 2 pi sine u plus our constant of integration with it being an indefinite integral. And finally, that's the same as 1 over 2 pi sine u, which is 2 pi t plus pi over 4, plus our constant of integration. I'm just going to look at a couple more examples. So this time we're going to integrate minus 2t e to the power of minus 2t squared, again with respect to t. 
But the other thing that you'll notice is that this is no longer an indefinite integral because we have the boundaries of 0 and 2.5. So we're going to find the area under that function between 0 and 2.5. But our process is exactly the same. We're going to make a substitution. And here's the important thing. We need to make the substitution such that we're reducing the power of this 2t squared. And you'll see why as we go through this process. So I'm going to make the substitution u equals minus 2t squared. So I've picked the value of t with the higher order. And the advantage of doing that is when I differentiate that, that power is going to reduce, as you'll see. So what we get is we get du by dt equals, well, minus 2t squared. We need to bring the power down or multiply the coefficient by the power, giving me minus 4 and reduce the power of t by 1. So we get minus 4t. We need to take the reciprocal of that because we don't want du by dt, we want dt by du. And once again, although it's dx du here, our variable this time is t. So dt by du equals 1 over minus 4t. Now I could have written that as minus 1 over 4t, but I'm just going to leave it in that format for the time being, just to keep things simple. So let's go to our equation in the general form. We have the integral between 0 and 2.5. We have our original function, minus 2t e to the minus 2t squared. We need to times that by dt du, or our function in the bottom left here. And timesing by 1 over minus 4t is the same as dividing by minus 4t. And I need to integrate that with respect to u. So we can do a couple of things here. If we look at our equation, we have a t on the top and a t on the bottom, so they cancel out. We have a minus on the top and a minus on the bottom, they cancel out. And we have 2 divided by 4, which is a half. So we can simplify this considerably. And we can simplify it as follows. We have the integral between 0 and 2.5, a half e to the minus 2t squared. We need to integrate that with respect to u. Now to integrate with respect to u, all we need to do is replace our minus 2t squared with u again. So we have the integral between 0 and 2.5, a half e to the u du. Well, when we integrate a half e to the u, we get exactly the same, a half e to the u. So now we can write this as square brackets, a half e to the u between 0 and 2.5. But what we need to do now is replace our u with our minus 2t squared again. So in actual fact, what we get is square brackets, a half e to the minus 2t squared, and we have our limits of 0 and 2.5. So in order to resolve between these limits, the first thing we need to do is input 2.5 into our equation, and then we need to input 0 into our equation. So I'm just going to switch colours as this is the new bit. So that's the same as, open brackets, a half e to the minus 2 times 2.5 squared, that's inputting 2.5 into the brackets, minus a half e, well minus 2 times 0 squared is just 0, so we'd have e to the 0 there. And that gives us a half e to the minus 2 times 2.5 squared equals 1.863 times 10 to the minus 6. So a very small number. And from that, we need to minus a half e to the 0. Well, a half e to the 0 is just 0 0.5. So when we do that sum, we get minus 0 0.49999 to 5 decimal places. So let's take a look at one final example. So in this final example, we have the integral of 4t squared 
minus 2te to the minus 2t squared dt. Now hopefully you realise that in the previous example, we've actually integrated this. And I'm not actually going to solve this example, I just want to show you how you would approach it. And it's very straightforward. What we have here is we have two terms. We have one term, the 4t squared, and we have the second term, minus 2t e to the minus 2t squared. Now that's exactly the same as saying the following. The integral of 4t squared dt plus the integral of minus 2t e to the minus 2t squared dt. We can just separate those two terms out. Well, 4t squared is a very straightforward integration. It's just a standard term, so we raise the power by 1, giving us t cubed, and we divide by the new power, so we get 4 thirds t cubed. And to that we would add the integral which we've just found, a half e to the minus 2t squared. But we need to remember if it's an indefinite integral to add our constant, or if it's a definite integral, we would need to input our value of t into each of those terms. So the same rules apply. We can integrate each term individually in order to find our final solution when we've got more complex problems like this.